don't, don't, don't call me Superman if you haven't found my kryptonite. What is going on YouTube? It is the Big K Cubs 360 here, and Intel has gone out and said that the next generation, uh, you know, series of Iris and Iris Pro, uh, APUs or CPUs or whatever, you know, you know how Iris Pro or Intel HD graphics is essentially integrated graphics on top of the CPU onto the one chip. They've pretty much gone out and said that, look, Iris and Iris Pro are going to outperform 80% of dedicated GPUs, repeat, 80% of the GPUs. Now, of course, they're saying that casual and mainstream users do not need dedicated GPUs. And of course, if this claim is true, they do have um, a bit of substance to that claim. However, keep in mind, this is like, this isn't 80% of the current GPUs on the market, like looking from, say, for example, the GTX 710 to the 780 Ti, or the, sorry, not the, like, there's no like 910 yet. So I'm just saying it like that. Or for example, the R7 210, it's like the R9 290X or whatever. This that's just an example. It's not like that. They're saying I'm pretty sure they're implying 80% from the start of GPUs. So they're including the fucking GT 510, the 430, um, the GTS 450, the Radeon like 5450 or some shit. All these old shit GPUs they're including in that. However, with that said, it's still quite an achievement, and they believe that with Intel HD 530 on Skylake, um, they will achieve or well, they have achieved. 1,152 gigaflops of GP performance. Oh, so that to put that into, into perspective, it's not as good as an Xbox One just yet. It's around the GTX 750 level-ish. It's like kind of around that zone. But keep in mind that Intel doesn't have the drivers that are as good as AMD or as good as Nvidia. So you're not really going to be matching that performance. Not to mention. Um, it's matching the performance of a stock 750 or a stock R7 260. So yeah, even that in itself is, you know, it raises questions. However, in it by itself, that's pretty powerful. That's pretty good, man. I mean, 1,152 gigaflops of performance, a DirectX 12. Um, hopefully it has Vulcan support. That's pretty decent. I mean, it all depends on the price, man. If they release this and the cost, the CPU costs like four, five hundred dollars, then you're better off buying a shit of CPU and getting a really good GPU. You're almost always better doing that. So Intel with these claims, I don't know about it, man. It's, maybe this would work out really well on the mobile platform and the laptops and whatnot and tablets, but. On desktops, I just don't think it's worth it just yet. I mean, it kind of depends on what user you are as well, but uh, it's really difficult to say, guys. It really is. And of course, it's not over just yet. We still have AMD coming out either at the end of this year or next year with the Zen APUs. And of course, they do have an APU which they're saying has what, what was it? It was a, an insane amount of bandwidth. I believe it was 128 gigabytes a second of memory bandwidth. And, um, it just looked very promising. I, I honestly believe that whatever AMD puts out APU-wise next year or on the Zen platform, it's just going to beat anything Intel can put out with RS Pro. AMD is just better when it comes to graphics, like on their CPUs. They've always been better. Now, of course, RS, Intel, sorry, and RS has caught up. And the 5775C and whatnot do beat... Um, you know, 5775C is an RS chip. It does beat the 7850K, for example, but... That that card, I mean, so not that card, that CPU costs a hell of a lot more money than the 7850K, and it's not really that much better. So, yeah, that's another thing, man. you got to keep price into the, into the, how can I say, I'm really screwing up my words today. you just got to keep price in mind, and you got to balance out price and performance, because that's the most important thing. You can't just put out like an insane APU or whatever, and then the price that's $600, and you can just buy um, a cheaper CPU, not like a cheap skate, like $50 CPU, but like a decent CPU and a better GPU and then you have better performance overall. So yeah, I mean, who really knows guys, it's going to be interesting to see both Intel and AMD are really pushing their APUs and you know, you know, GPU and CPU together, you don't need the DGPU. We're always going to need GPUs. For the next few years, we're definitely always going to need GPUs. Maybe sometime in the future that will change, but for now, dedicated, discrete GPUs are the way to go. So anyway, guys, well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And comment down below what you think. I mean, Intel is saying that casual 
and mainstream users do not need dedicated GPUs. And honestly, I believe that to, an ex uh, to a certain extent is true. If you're a casual gamer, then I don't really think you need a fucking R9 280 or R9 380 or 380X or a GTX 780 or 770 or 960. Or maybe a 960 because 960 is not that good. But you know what I mean. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And look, the BK will see you later.